Edward Boucher was born here in New Haven, raised here. His father worked as a custodian uh, at Yale University, and Edward Boucher himself was a remarkable student. He actually completed high school as a valedictorian of his high school class, was entered into Yale College, uh, graduated Phi Beta Kappa, number six out of a class of 124, and then was invited to actually continue his education at Yale, where just two years later he received his PhD in physics. From there, he moved on to various attempts to get jobs at institutions. He wasn't allowed to actually be a member of the Yale community as a faculty, and he wasn't allowed to actually join universities anyplace else. It's hard to imagine what it would be like to be a black person in your classes, people not wanting to sit next to you, people doubting your abilities or really even your reason for being there in class. I can't really imagine what it's like to be the first when you're the first for so many things. So Edward Boucher was a true pioneer in a way that it's unrecognizable for us today because he was the first to get a PhD. He was the first to actually get as far in science as any African American ever had at that point in time. And so being a pioneer in that sense uh, is a particular kind of bravery, but it's also knowledge that your drive and your ability are things that you have to be very, very sure of in a way that you can't get by simply asking other people who are gonna give you some kind of recognition for your mathematical skills or your ability to do physics or your interest in chemistry. We've always been interested in physics and black people have been suppressed as opposed to not having the interest or not having the ability. We really, from early on in our uh, history here in the country, should have been and could have been working in science, in engineering, in a lot of fields that we're not known for right now. The fact that he wasn't able to actually carry on and do research or do education at the college level with white students is an example of what we've lost in terms of opportunity, not for him personally so much as for the nation as a whole, because he should have been a legacy. He was the first African-American to get a PhD. So all of that history in which we could have been generating people who might be solving any number of problems that we have today or who could have just been advancing the fields of physics uh, by virtue of their talents, we lost as a nation, we lost as a university, and consequently, we lost as a society. I definitely think that Edward Boucher's story should be taught in schools uh, from a pretty young age, and not just because of the struggles that he overcame in order to get the education that he did, but because he didn't give up after he got his education. I am the fourth recipient of the Edward A. Boucher Award from the American Physical Society. And that award was put together on the basis of being able to promote underrepresented minorities' entry into physics. So to me, it's personally very inspiring to not only know that there's a tradition there, but that that tradition is recognized by a coalition of physicists, some 50,000 strong. You won't find many people who will know that it was Yale University that graduated him that trained him, and that's a shame to me. That's an important thing for us to know, not only that the opportunity was provided here, but the fact that other opportunities, including coming back into the fold as a Yale professor, were denied, despite the fact that he'd shown all of this talent.